Hey, Banger fans, Blaine Smith here with another Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly metal review show. As always, if you like the content we put out there, we've got a Patreon campaign that you can support. There's going to be some cool stuff coming out for that, so you might want to keep an eye on the page, get in on that, and, you know, just like, subscribe, comment, all the normal stuff. Uh, it's October here in Canada, which means one thing. Uh, I'm cold. It's cold in here all the time now. And since it is October, what a perfect time for some face painting, church scaring, Norwegian black metal. Yes, 1349 is releasing the Infernal Pathways today, October 18th, on Season of Mist. Who are 1349? You know, but let's pretend we don't. 1349 are one of the big Norwegian black metal bands, formed in, you guessed it, 1997. Ah, uh, their most famous member is, of course, Frost from Satyricon. And outside of a departing guitar player in 2006, their recording lineup has been peculiarly stable for a metal band. Not a big, long list uh, uh, with all those colors on Wikipedia. We've just got Sediment, Raven, and Archeon on bass, vocals, and guitars. Still. So, hey. Not a lot happening there. So they cranked out a bunch of albums at the start of their career, but their output has slowed over the years. So this is only their seventh album with actually a five year break between this and the last one. But it's not so much relevant to the last one as Infernal Pathways is a sequel to 2010's Demon Noir, which I assume is a room for sexy lady demons. So what was left unsaid in 2010? Let's segue to review. So after cranking out those three aforementioned albums at the start of the career, 1349 has been a band interested in experimenting within the genre. And this year's experiment, this time around, is Thrash. From album opener Abyssius Antithesis, the thrash elements pervade the whole thing. The two sides come together particularly well on Through Eyes of Stone, Towers Upon Towers, and Striding the Chasm. Uh, this results in some really fun, if albeit a little simple, but still catchy riffs on those tracks that Get you going, get you into the vibe. Striding the Chasm definitely is where it all comes together best, though, creating a nice, fun, thrashy black metal jam. It's definitely the point where thrash uh, infects Frost's drumming the most. Uh, he's always very talented and skilled, but mixes a little up on this track. Also, the guitar work, it has the best riffs, I think, but the solo uh, is really phenomenal because uh, it's as much about technical proficiency and showing off as it about getting your body moving and having fun, which is a thing that I think a lot of guitarists forget when they're soloing. Make it fun, make it interesting, outside of just sh pure finger wizardry. Uh, there's also a nice little guitar squeal where in the middle of the song that just really ties a ribbon on the whole thing, and it's a nice, complete package to give to your loved ones around this festive season, that festive being Halloween. The only track that really stands outside the thrash is album closer, Stand Tall in Fire. This is a really great example of how to close an album properly. It's easily the slowest and longest track, uh, building a great doomy vibe on the back of some phenomenal bass work by Sediment, all the way up to an almost one minute solo. Super fun, super cool. Uh, a lot of bands really garbage up the closers, so uh, this is how you do it right. But, of course, if I'm talking about an album closer this soon in the review, that means there's some stuff wrong here. So, hey, let's, uh, you know, jump over it. Let's go to the other, let's go to the other side. 1349, we need to, Sit down and have a chat, you, me, and your mother here. Uh, Massive Cauldron of Chaos came out. I thought, hey, maybe it's a phase. We don't need to get into it, avoid this awkward conversation. But here we are again. What is with you guys and these interlude tracks? Who told you you guys were good at ambient interlude tracks? It's out of control. So I mentioned this was a sequel to 2010's Demon Noir, and the tunnel of set is back, even continuing the numbering from that. Thankfully, it's only three tracks this time as opposed to every other one, but I don't get why these are here. Uh, the band has slowed considerably since their early days, so it's not like I need some 
brief reprieve from the punishment they're putting me under. Uh, the theme this time is thrash, so it doesn't really fit with the ambient kind of stuff going on, because it's thrash, and that's not really super heavy on the atmosphere. And uh, in terms of just judging the tracks by themselves, they could have easily been picked out of a binder that said, uh, basic black metal band slash spooky Halloween sounds. It's just, it's just wind going through a tunnel. Also, you may have noticed I've said the word thrash a lot, but I've never referred to this as a black and thrash album. And that's because it never really feels like it blends together into a black and thrash. It's always black metal with some thrash elements occasionally. They don't fully embrace. It's the same problem we had on Enter Cold Void Dreaming, where you're trying to take on this new style and experiment, but it doesn't feel like you're really going all in. It's like you've adopted this kid and you've brought him into your home, but then every day you're like, you're adopted. Black metal's our real son. We love him more. You know, you gotta take in, if you're gonna take in that child, you really gotta, you gotta make him feel safe. I think part of this a little bit comes down to Frost drumming. He's so busy obliterating a kit and I'm not saying he's not playing well. The problem is he's playing maybe too well, it's thrash. Let a simple gallop come in there. Miss a hit here and there. Black and thrash is a sloppy, fun, silly time. And so it doesn't really feel like that precision and thrash are going together well and blending nicely. Ah, it's just, mm. So what we're ultimately left with is a very proficient album that's well made and well executed that I don't really have a need for. It's, there's no place in my library for this. It feels more edited and tempered than the aggressive chaos of an R Noir album. It lacks the fun, silly vibe of something like Death Hammer. And so what we wind up with is a sequel that's, as usual, slightly worse than the original. It's not significantly worse than Demon Noir, but it's a real uh, scream two of uh, black metal albums. So yes, good, just not great. And that is why you get a good, not great score of three out of five ghost faces because I'm really just leaning into this whole Halloween thing I've been doing for the whole review. I didn't have a costume like the last one. It's too cold. I had to have a nice flannel shirt on, so you get the you get the Halloween in the words. But as always, we have shout outs. Out. So here's two albums that I think might go well with this. I mean, you know, if you like this, you'll probably like these two. If you don't like this, you might still like these two. These are just two good albums coming out soon that I think you might like. Uh, next week, speaking of black metal blends, we have Cloak releasing The Burning Dawn on Season of Mist. That comes out October 25th. It's another blend. It's black metal and rock. If you like Tribulation, it's good. Another Season of the Mist, you know, their family, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice thing. Check it out. And if you just like some straight black metal, Rim Frost is releasing Expedition Darkness uh, October 18th as well. Uh, it's an independent release, so you know, we like to shout out, give a little credit to the independents out there, so go give them some love, and hey, give us some love, you know, comment section, blah, 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 all that. We appreciate it. We love you guys. Bye.